My name is Dr. Wu. My name is Dr. Wu. I've been given tutorial to medical students for the last 30 years. I give this tutorial one-to-one -one basis. I decided to have it taped. This is part five of the lectures. The first is local opioid general anesthetic, inhalation anesthetic, and this is muscle relaxant. As an anesthesia, we have lots of sensation. We talk about lots of sensation in the, in the first four part, but the patient still move. So what do we do? We stop them from moving by paralyzing the muscle. How does it work? Muscle relaxing, how does it work? First, you got a motor nerve coming down to a neuromuscular junction. And then you got the muscle actin myosin. And the muscle had troponin and tropomyosin. And then in here, you've got the sacroplasmic plasmic reticulum. What does that complete for them to do is you've got calcium molecule here. This is motor nerve action potential comes along. Estalcholine reticle. Got release and the estalcholine activate this part here. And the sacrophosphate will take them release the calcium. The calcium activate the troponin and tropomyosin and the muscle contract. Cholin three come along. Destroy the acetylcholine in here. Calcium go back to the sacroposmic reticulum. Troponin to propiosity relax. The muscle relax. And it happens very fast. Of course, even thousands of a second, because you see a piano player, they could play a lot of tune within a second. So how do we paralyze the muscle? There's two muscle relaxing we use. One is depolarizing. Called succinylcholine. What does succinylcholine do? Succinylcholine has similar structure to acetylcholine. Instead of acetyl acetate acid, we got succinyl succinic acid. So succinylcholine works the same as acetylcholine. What does it do? It also activates this area here, postsynaptic junction, and it causes muscle contraction. It deprives the muscle near the junction and causes muscle contraction because we give so much succinylcholine. To the body, the whole body junction, new muscular junction got affected, and patient contract involuntary discoordinatedly, and it caused fatigue collision. And after fatigue collision, the muscle is Relax. Why? Because there's still succinylcholine attached here. It takes some time for it to be metabolized. And then, if you give a right dose, you've got three to five minutes. So it depends on the dose. I give depend on the patient. Because it all depends on the Cholinesterase. 
Not everybody calling is the same. Some people the calling is no good. Some people are better. Those people with no good calling is would take longer. Those people with good calling is would have shorter. And people with no good calling is call it calling is deficiency. It's not that they don't have cholesterol, it's just that the function of the cholesterol is no good. Of course, there are really rare people who don't have any cholesterol at all. So, if you give succinylcholine to those people with no cholesterol at all, then we expect the patient to be paralyzed for a long, long time until all the succinylcholine is peed out in the urine. And then there's a non depolarizing muscle relaxant. What did long depressing methorexin do? It just sits here like a block. And it prevents acetylcholine from reaching it. The one we have is curare. And then somebody come along and say, oh, we have curare. Why don't we make something similar? And the guy make pancuronium. And he's from Straka University. In Glasgow. And his lab, he's not a physician, but he's Cambridge. He find out the formula of curare, so he make pancuronium. And then people become making more vacuronium and then atricurium. Rocuronium, uh, Mivicurium, they even make Doxicurium, and Cisaticurium. Now most of those muscle relaxants are excreted in the kidney. And the liver. Only atrocurium is different. Atrocurium is hopping elimination. Self destruct by hopping elimination. So, those non deprimers and methexins sit here like a blob. We went to acetylcholine to reach it, so there's no function after that. But the muscle relaxed, muscle, neuromuscular junction is very resilient, a lot of reserve. You can block 75% of it, around 75%. I only got 25% of it function. The muscle will have portrait. That means the muscle function normally. When you get to 90% block, then you don't have no twitch. See? So to give muscle relaxing on the front, first you have to block 90% of it, 90%. So you give a dosage enough to block 90%. When the, when the blockage went down to 75%, you got four twitch and the patient start moving. So you use a blockade monitor to monitor the patient, you got four twitch or no twitch. And somewhere in between you got Something like that called freight. To reverse the muscle relaxing, you need to have some freight. If you've got fully blocked, it's very difficult to reverse. The reason why the new agent was made because the half time. Pancuronium. To get 90% block, you're looking at about 40 to 40 miles per minute. Rocuronium, you're about 10 to 15 minutes. See? And it work. So, Rocuronium become very popular, or Atricurium become popular, because it's a short-term acting. And with a certain 
suddenly finish the pace the the surgery you don't have to wait for a long time for it to recover. What do we use to reverse the muscle relaxation? We use something that will just stop the cholinesterase from destroying the acetylcholine. You stop the cholinesterase, acetylcholine accumulate in this junction. Because a competitive block, it may overcome it, but you have to have some, some function before you can overcome it. So you use prothymine. to reverse the, the effect because prostrating prevent the cholesterol to destroy stacholine. But stacholine also mediate mediator for the vagus nerve. So you may get bradycardia, so you have to get something to control it, like atropine or glycopyrrhine. So this is essentially how muscle relaxing works. Now, of course, the new agent called Sugamadex. So the next is the new agent. What it does is bind the bind with those drugs. When it bind with those drugs, essentially you're taking it away from the receptor here, and you can reverse it completely. Instead of a competitive block, this is a better reversal agent. Again. It depends on the dosage you give. How fast those things, those non depressant much work well, depends on the dosage. You give a very large dosage, it works fast. Because succulent was used because it, the onset is very fast. But you can use the same non depressing relaxing just a larger dosage and you get fake, you can have a fast onset. Just that you have to wait for a little time before it's, it's eliminated. Now, there are people who had disease in here. Any muscle problem Like my skinny gravis. The neuromuscular junction is not healthy. They don't have those 75% reserve. So anybody with the skinny gravis or any neuromuscular junction disease, to be very careful using those agents. I'm even more careful using those sectional cooling. Because people with neuromuscular junction disease or muscle neuropathy could mimic malignant hypothermia, which is triggered by sectional cooling. So there's two muscle relaxing, non depressing and non depressing. And those are the drugs. And remember, you can only reverse them when they're fake. And you fully block, very difficult to reverse.